Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to the Hybrid Network, where we're still talking about IT. Can you really blame us though? I mean, so much stuff has been coming out about the new film and what the plans are for a sequel. So much so, in fact, that we figured we'd do a video breaking it all down for you, just to give you a little bit more to chew on now that I'm sure plenty of you have already seen the movie and you're desperately hungry for more. If you haven't seen the movie though, this video will contain a few spoilers, so if you haven't seen it, you might want to click off now and come back later. But with that out of the way, let's look a little bit at what we can expect for IT Chapter 2. So, a little bit of a rundown, the novel of IT is separated into two distinct time frames. One that takes place when the Losers Club are children, and the other when they return to Derry 27 years later to combat the entity as adults. IT Chapter 1 takes place in 1989, so it sets up nicely so that the second part of the story can take place in modern times. Or at least in a time closer to where we are, 2016. The film hasn't officially been greenlit yet, though trust me, those numbers don't lie, and it's surely going to be given to go ahead any day now, with Gary Doberman and Andy Muschietti hard at work on a script for the sequel already. There's no one officially cast yet, though fan favorite Jessica Chastain is being championed hard by not only her child counterpart Sophia Lillis, but also director and producer Sir Andy and Barbara Muschietti, so you can probably expect something to happen with her once the film gets the go-ahead. In addition to all of this, Muschietti's have been making the run around the film circuit, talking to journalists about the next chapter of this horror epic and what we can possibly expect for the future. Bringing in the trans-dimensional element of the novel seems to be something that they want to happen, with several interviews citing that the plan is to dive a little bit deeper with the identity of Pennywise and where exactly it comes from. Before the film was released, there was talk about how a few scenes had to be cut from the movie, and while some of which we'll get to at another time, a few were meant to sort of explore the more ancient aspect of the clown. In an interview with Variety, Bill Skarsgård actually explained a scene that could potentially crop up in the sequel, something that's actually present in earlier versions of the script that are floating about online. Skarsgård explained that it was a scene about Pennywise before he was Pennywise. Not the clown, but something else entirely. It was a 1600s flashback sequence, one that hinted at the prospect of the entity existing for many years and would have been our only real clue in the movie as to the true nature of it. It. In addition to this, there was also the reveal that a scene with a black spot, which was briefly mentioned in the movie, was planned in the script, but ultimately couldn't be filmed for budgetary reasons. The good news? Barbara Muschietti is keen on the scene making a comeback as the opening for the second film, which will hopefully play a bigger role in expanding on its historical and cosmic presence. The turtle is one of those cosmic elements that plays a role within King's novel. We see many references to it throughout the film, but we never actually have the children make some sort of connection with it in the macroverse. That might not change entirely with the second film, as Andy Muschietti seems pretty adamant that he doesn't want Chapter 2 to become a big fantasy film. Which is fair, and I agree with him on that front. You want to keep the same elements of horror from the first movie and bridge that over to the second part when they're adults. But he has stated that it could be more blatant in just how the turtle helps the losers, stating that in the second movie it would be ideal to have the turtle leave clues for the losers to discover that helps them remember the summer of 1989, because what they need to truly kill it lies within that summer, within their childhood. That brings us to one of the biggest things about Chapter 2, is that the child losers are still set to have pretty big roles within the film's narrative. As the flashback sequences to the summer that they first encounter it will create a dialogue between the two different timelines that was at the heart of the original novel. They're set to play off of each other, it seems, as again, that summer holds a special power that's necessary to defeating it, most likely that the adult versions of our losers have to remember what they felt and how they came together in order to defeat the entity again. What will actually happen to some of these losers though. Well, if you've seen the movie and read the book, you'll know that there was kind of a big departure from the source material. Ben Hanscom was given the reins as the historian of the group, first introducing everyone to the concept that strange occurrences have been happening in Derry for a while now. And this was originally a role that Mike Hanlon had. As an adult, he became the town's librarian and actually began to comb over Derry's history, discovering all of the horrific events that plagued the town, and led him back to the discovery that it was an ancient being that had been in Derry long before the Losers long before humanity even. Andy Muschietti has described that he has an idea in mind for Mike in the next chapter, stating that he's the loser that stays behind to warn the rest should the creature ever return. He becomes so obsessed with finding out what it exactly is that he becomes a junkie in the sense that he has to alter his mind in order to try to understand what exactly it is and how they could possibly defeat it. Not necessarily the ritual of Chud, but it sounds like a process that could lead them to find a solution quite similar to that process. 
As it stands, IT Chapter 2 looks to be going to some very strange places. Which is good, considering that the novel itself gets pretty out there and transdimensional, so all we can really do is hope for the best. But what do you guys think? How excited are you for the next chapter of IT? Let us know down in the comments, and be sure you stay subscribed for updates on IT and other Stephen King projects as they come out. This is Luke, and we'll catch you all next time.